Hey guys, welcome back. So I've gotten a few questions on how you make the animal shaped puzzles. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know what kind of puzzle brought you here today. So I'm gonna show you how to make these puzzle pieces sort of match up with the animal or whatever other uh, shape you want to use there. So since I showed you the cat and the dolphin already, we'll go ahead and make the dog one. I'm gonna open the pro design library over here using the little apple icon, this one right here. And we get this giant library of awesome sources here of different icons and whatnot. So Let's go ahead and make a dog themed one. And so what I'm looking for is something that doesn't have too much detail for the animal. That way we can't really tell what breed it is too much. And um, still has enough detail that we can tell that it is a dog, right? So that's not one there I want to use. Um, I like this little puppy, right? There's a puppy one. That's, that's cool. So we'll bring in this puppy one like that. I'll just sort of change the size. We'll bring it up a little larger. That way it can fit over here on this sheet of material that's eight by 12. We can obviously make this a bigger puzzle if you like, but keeping it around the size of a sheet of paper seems to work out pretty well. So we can also center it if you wanna do that. Center to material. If you are gonna place it on a bigger board like this, or you might place it offset to one side and put their name, right? So this whole idea here, I'm, I'm going to place it on a board. So just to kind of preserve the way stuff is, I like to make another work piece, a cop, a duplicate of the original one here. So like that, I didn't mean to make this other one. And uh, we'll delete that out. So here I've got a duplicate of it to work with. So our original is gonna remain untouched. So with that over here in the new workspace, we need to go ahead and make a puzzle. And if we go in here to these puzzle tools, we get an error right now, and that's because I didn't select the dog shape first. Now I like this puzzle designer, but you see the pop up here? It says, please select a shape first, and it's not letting me click onto it, right? This one here I can click onto, and it'll make a rectangle puzzle, but I really don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to select this shape of the dog, go back in here one more time, and use the puzzle designer. And using that, it's going to make these sort of puzzle pieces. Now you can change how many pieces there are, but since this is a relatively square design I've got here, the five by five or maybe even four by four works out quite well. Four by four is kind of larger pieces. So let's go with the five by five. I just kind of like the way that looks personally for this one. So we'll import that in. And you'll see it superimposed all these puzzle pieces on top of the dog, but it also cut all the dog pieces to that correct shape. Now it would be tricky had I had this dog set to a full depth cut, instead I had it set to this medium range somewhere between. And that's gonna allow me to right now select a puzzle piece that is full depth, select edit and select by matching depth. And now I've got all those puzzle pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them all or remove. You can just click on them and press the delete key as well. That works just the same. Now you can see that the dog is individual puzzle pieces, right? And some of these get a little tricky, like this one. It's split up into multiple sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and start joining those little ones together. So here I've got these two that I can join together, uh, but this is gonna have a hard time attaching, right? So I might as well just attach it to this one here also. And we'll just select the ones we wanna to join together like that. And I'll go ahead and select combine and You'll notice in there that that hot key for it is Control J. We'll select a few other ones you can see. The hot key for it is Control J. So going forward, I'm just going to press those buttons to make this go a little faster. So you'll see here that once I join the tail up, it's got this weird little notch out section here down below it that I don't want to be its own separate little piece, right? That would look kind of funky and it would probably get lost very easily. So I'm going to go in here to these apps again, and I'm using an app called the Shape Explorer, and it's this grenade icon right you know the bottom down here you can type in in the search feature up above shape if you like just as i did for puzzle and it will pop up as well a little quicker so i'm going to explode that shape and what that does is it splits that design element up into its different pieces since they weren't actually attached so now i can take these ones and combine them as well right without combining the rest of this to it which is what I want to repeat up here for this, because this is a split apart piece as well. So I will go into the Shape Exploder and split these up. I'm 
going to go ahead and just do that to the rest of the puzzle here real quick and kind of combine all those pieces around. Oh, so here we can see that uh, this shape here actually is going to be cut. It's probably going to break, right? So it's going to be kind of works fine. Little, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just division there of this. that ear and kind of the way to bring it over here to this other workspace. Let me make sure those coordinates came in the same. And they did, right? So I was just looking at the position here to make sure it is located right where it is uh, on the previous model. That way, once I do my modification, I can bring it back in without having to uh, worry about disturbing the location. So another neat trick here for that, for keeping the location, once it's in here to make sure I don't accidentally drag it and move it around like that, is I can pin it. You'll see there's a little pin button. And if yours doesn't have that already activated, just go over here to Machine, General Settings, and you can enable that option right here. And then you'll have that option to pin it. And now once it's pinned, I can't move it. I also can't delete it. It's, it's not an option anymore until you unpin it. So just keep that in mind if there's ever anything that you try to move around and you just can't move it, or you try to delete it, you just can't delete it, you might have pinned it in place. So I wanna split these two parts up right down this center part here, right? So the easiest way that I thought to do that is to bring in a shape. Set this to uh, 0.002 inches. 0 0.001 is too fine in some cases, and it won't quite cut it. In order for it to cut through, so I'll set this uh, as a zero. We can go ahead as long as it's on top, it'll actually switch. cut through it just like that. So I can select these two here, edit and combine. And now you can see that I've got that blue line going through there, indicating it's two separate items. So I can go in here and into the shape exploder and once again explode these two out into separate items. And I've got these two pieces. So I can go ahead and copy them again. Go in here to this one, and I think I'm done with that. I'll paste them back into place. And now they're in the perfect position that they were before. I can grab these two, combine these together, and I've got a little dog ear going on there. So now with that done, I can keep on going around and modify any other pieces that are like that around here. Like you'll see, there's some weird what's going on here. This one looks okay. I can just go ahead and split this one. I did see there's a little tiny sliver of the foot down here. So watch out for those. You can kind of see it here in this picture a little better. So by selecting it like this, I can combine these together. And I did grab that little sliver that was down there just in case. Now I've got another little issue here as well with this one and this one too. So I'll have to just repeat that same process. And some of these do kind of get tricky on what parts you do want to keep together and separate. So these are nice here. I'll keep those together as one. And then these two here, control J to combine them together as one element as well. So if you know how simple or how difficult you want to make this puzzle to assemble, you can kind of choose how you want to combine parts together, right? So we need to add that to it as well. I think we are in business here. So now we can go ahead and set these two cut around the outside of this path. But because of the way that this works, you typically get an issue right here where it says you're importing an SVG that has open paths or you, you can't. So you get a little sort of an issue here. We get this pop-up that says you can't do that offset or around the shape or open path vectors. You might have seen that before with other vectors you might have imported into easel so in order to resolve that any one that we combined actually automatically closed it so we can do our offs our outside of the pass with these ones just fine but the ones that we didn't really mess with yet are the ones that are giving us this error so you can go through and figure out which ones are the case um, manually doing this one at a time or or you can simply jump right into this tree or you can simply jump right in this trick I'm about to show you and repeat it for all of the shapes, no matter what. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a bunch of copies of this white circle, which is just a default shape, and just combine it with these other shapes. And every time I do a combine function, it automatically closes that open vector. Now, if you want to see the open vector in a little bit more detail, we can go ahead and 
show you that right here this one is open so the easy way to see that is when we set it to on path you can see that it's kind of split apart right there with the blue lines right it's a little bit difficult to see when it's pocket like that so did notice that this one here also has that little tiny piece down there so we do want to split that apart as well so we jump into the shape exploder and split that apart combine that one with this one real quick and that one is fixed and then after that we just need to combine all these with some of these elements up here to ensure that they are all fixed so now i'm going to grab these ones and see if i fixed all these or if there's any more errors up here so at least one of them is giving me an error let's go ahead and just combine a few more of them just to see how that if that's enough so we've got at least one more up here that's giving me a problem right and make a few more copies of this and those seem fine got at least one more error up here too we can just go ahead and just continue combining a few of them i guess i could have done this one at a time and just done them all by the time they're it's taking me all i think i found my problem child here it's that one oh somehow i did not delete one of these copies maybe yep So we'll just go ahead and delete that one out. That'll be fine. All right. So now I've got all these pieces here that are set to cut outside the path. However, they're they're too close. If I show you over here in the preview, they're going to overlap each other with these cuts. So then it just comes time to uh, spread them out, right? But we do probably want to maintain as much of the grain as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and actually make a copy of this real quick. Oh, that's pinned in place, right? So delete that out. And I can paste this dog in there. Now, I like to do that with making different work pieces just to make sure in case I screw something up, I can always just undo on this one without having to uh, really mess with going back too much on this one. So these puzzle pieces are ready to kind of be spread apart from each other and then you can cut them. However, they're so close that it's best to add like a little offset in there as well. So now I can go ahead back in here and add an offset. I like the offset or V2 because it maintains your position. It doesn't move it back down to the corner. The V1 will move it back down the corner on you and you might not want that. Now it's kind of up to you on what sort of an offset you want to put in here. You can try different things for your material and your machine um, to find one that offsets, offsets it enough that the parts will still fit together without um, interference, right? If you're painting, obviously you're gonna need a larger offset to account for any, any of the finish if you're painting or clear coating. So just keep that in mind as well. If you're leaving these parts raw wood, then a smaller offset will probably do just fine. So play with that and figure out what sort of an offset you need for yours. And here we've got the offset selected, one iteration, and it needs to be an inwards offset, not an outwards one, because that offsetting outwards will just make them interfere more. I've unchecked keep original. Now it's just a matter of moving these parts around and deciding whether or not you want to use tabs. Personally, I don't love tabs for this because now I'm ready them off to throw down some double sided tape. So instead I'll use double sided tape. Okay. Pull these so down. now this part is ready to get carved out as just the puzzle pieces. We can also go ahead and carve this out as a holder for them if you would like to do that as well. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Check out this video next.